In a previous tutorial, we made a really cool system to procedurally extrude hems along a vertex group selection. The system works really well and is really stable with any kind of animation, but in its original version, it worked by sequentially extruding the different parts one after the other, which works well for simple hems with a single fold, but it can become really cumbersome if we want to have more complex hems with different kind of folds, which is the kind of system I am planning on building. So in this video, we are going to evolve the whole system so it can extrude everything depending on the profile of a curve, meaning we can make it as convoluted as we want and it will still be stable with any kind of animation. And we can also really easily procedurally edit the base curve so we can add radiuses, resample everything and much more. I'm building this system as part of my procedural close sewing toolbox, but I am sure you can also use this system to, to procedurally extrude edges along a curve for other kind of systems. So let's get into it. So let's build this again from scratch. I'm going to deactivate this Jonas modifier and create a new one. Now the first thing I want to do is capture the current position of everything. And with the position node, like so. Then I'm going to move everything to its UV space coordinates with the set position node and I'm going to set the position input as a new group input and then on the modifier tab I can switch to attribute and set my UV map. On the group sockets I can rename this attribute to UV map and set a default attribute to the default blender UV map name which is just UV map. Now from this I want to get only the edge loops I selected so in my case this will be the vertex group called hems right here. So let's set a compare node because we want to check if the values are equal to one. And we can plug this as a new group input, which I'm going to rename edge selection. And on the modifier panel, I'm going also to set it to attribute. And here I'm going to fetch my hems attribute. Now with this, I can add a separate geometry node set to point and for the selection I can set the selection out of my compare node. So now I should only have one edge loop in the UV space coordinates which I can convert to curve with the mesh to curve node. This way it automatically creates a new attribute which is the tangent of the curve which is going along the curve like this or in the opposite direction. And along with the tangent attribute we also have the normal direction of our base mesh. So this gives us two orthogonal vectors and with the cross product operation we'll be able to get a third one which is going to be orthogonal to the first two vectors. And those three vectors will basically be a new coordinate system we'll be able to use and it will depend on each point. And in this case we we'll always want the cross product of the two first vector we already got so the curve tangent and normal of the mesh to be pointing outwards from the mesh. And this might not always be the case because if Blender generated a curve in the other direction with the tangent going this way, we'll get a vector pointing inwards. So basically we'll take our curve, move it, move it along the direction of the cross product I just explained. And if it is outside of our mesh island in the UV space, then it is in the right direction, but if it is going inside, it is in the wrong direction, so we need to reverse the curve direction. We already tested this in a few other tutorials, but let's do it again. We'll only check at one point of the curve in the middle, so for this we need a simple curve node, set to factor, and the middle of the curve is the factor 0.5. Let's plug our curve into this node, and for the curve index, we can get the index, which is going to through a capture attribute node set to spline, like so. Then we can do the cross product between the tangent and the normal direction, which in UV space is pointing upward, like so. Scale this by some amount, so we can predefine a distance from which to check if we are still inside or outside of our mesh island. Here I like to put a pretty low value, so for example one millimeter, and let's add this to the position, so this will get us a point which is either inside or outside of the mesh and to test where it is we can do a simple UV surface operation which we are going to do with the group input on our base mesh with the UV map being UV map and the sample UV will be the vector we just computed. And with this 
we can evaluate this is valid output on the domain being the spline and as i said earlier if it is not valid we are going to reverse the curve so this should give us a consistent outwards direction now we can put this in a new group with the scale of this vector also as an input and we can put the normal of this cross product also as an input if we need to change it so this will be the uv space normal this is the curve reverse threshold then we have our source geometry source uv map and the base mesh is the curve and this is the setup to check everything so in my case i already have another group to do this on my file so i'm going to replace the one we just created but it is really the same and i just called it fixed curve direction i just plug this wrong but here it is corrected i also set the curves reverse threshold as a new group input and i like to set it as a single value and basically the whole point of moving into the uv space right here is to get a consistent curve direction now with this curve, let's move back to its original coordinates with the set position node. And for the position, we are going to set the capture position we did earlier. So now we have two things. We have our curve with a consistent direction and our base mesh. And now what we want to do is give to our base mesh the information we computed on the curve. So the main tangent direction. To do this, we'll be able to do a simple nearest operation and a sample index to sample a vector which will be our curve tangent now you can plug everything like this and let's also put a reroute node with the label being the hem tangent so we can remember it is here now if you check this from the perspective of our base mesh you should have a warning on the sample nearest because it doesn't work on curves but we can just fix this with a curve to mesh node right before the sample nearest node and now it should work way better so now let's build a coordinates system with this what we'll need is three different vectors which is going to be the normal of our mesh the curve tangent we just computed and the cross product between the normal and the hem tangent so i'm going to add a few reroute nodes to make everything clearer and label them accordingly so the hem tangent will be our local x-axis, the normal will be the local z-axis, and the cross product will be the local y-axis. So now with the three local axes, which are defined at each point, so here we have three axes like this, here there will be more like this, and here like this, we will want to define a transformation using matrix to go from the original coordinates to this new coordinate system and with the three new directions corresponding to each axis it is pretty easy to do we just need to take a combined matrix node and to fill it we are going to take each of our new axes and separate their coordinates feed the x y and z value to the first three rows of the first column the same from the second one and the same from the third one the final rows will be offset to zero and for the final column we can leave everything at zero and the final row to a value of one let's collapse this node and now that we have our transform matrix we can capture it in this branch to each of the points like so so now we have our fixed coordinates system at each point which we will be finally able to use to extrude our hems along some curves so first let's create a hem curve profile i'm going to align it to the general y direction add a new curve remove all points except one and extrude my hem shape in the y and z plane like this and here let's set the spline type to poly now for this the curve direction will be really important so you can turn on the handles in the curve edit mode overlays so you have small arrows to check that the curve direction is going toward the positive y-axis like this so this will be the profile from my hem curve 
which I can drag into my geometry node system. And let's set it to relative. Now here I created the general shape while, while keeping in mind that the first segment is in fact already our base mesh. So we only need to extrude the following points. So the first thing I can do is add a delete geometry node and remove one endpoint with, an, with an endpoint selection and just put the start size to 1 and end size to 0. And this is just to help picture better what the final hem will look like because if we remove already the first point, it will be a bit harder to picture. Right after this, we can set a transform generation node to change the scale if needed. And now let's set up the extrusions. For this, I'm going to need a repeat zone. And here the usual first step is to add a math node to add a value of 1 to a new input, which is just going to count the iteration of the repeat node. So here I can set it to integer. Then for the iteration count, right here, we need the number of points in our hem curve, minus one. So let's get a domain size node set to curve and take the point count to which I'm going to subtract one. And let's plug our geometry right after our captured attribute in which we captured the matrix into the repeat zone. Now here the operation we want to do on our mesh is to extrude the mesh in a mode set to edges. And if we do it like this, we'll just extrude everything. So for this, we need to set the selection, which is going to be our edge selection for the first iteration, which you can again compare if it is equal to one. And then, so it doesn't extrude everything at each iteration, we can take the top attribute at the output of this extrude mesh and put it as the selection of the next iteration. So now it is just extruding along the normal at each iteration. And now to make it extrude properly in the direction of the next point, we need at each iteration to compute the direction between the next point and the current point. And for this, the repeat zone will be really helpful again. And we will be able to use some sample index nodes set to vector to get the position of each point from our curve. We could just do it like this, but we will lack the first value. So first, let's keep the index to a zero and put this outside of the repeat zone and put the value as a new input. So the first iteration will begin with the first point in memory. Now we can control shift D duplicate this node and for the index we'll be able to start at the next value. So after the add one operation and this will be the position for the next iteration. And to get the direction, we can just take the next point we want to do, subtract the point from the previous iteration and this will be our offset direction. And this is already pretty near the final offset direction, but we just need to transform it to the local coordinates. And let's also add everything to the group output so you can see better what we are doing. So if I plug this right here, we already get our general hem shape, but the directions are all wrong and they just follow the global coordinates. So to put this in our new local space we computed before, we can use a node which is transform direction because this is just a direction and for the transform, we can finally use the matrix we computed earlier. And let's lower the scale so we can see what we are doing better. And here, if you are having an issue with inconsistent direction, make sure to select the domain of the capture attribute which captured the matrix transform to edge instead of points. It should be a bit more consistent. And so this is the general and pretty simple setup to extrude a mesh along the direction of some curves in the local space of each point. Now there are two things that are pretty cool with this. So here, right after we take our main curve, we can add some fillets set to limit radius. And now we can add way more details really easily. And also, it can be really easy to recompute everything. So I am using this to create hems and different kind of seams on my cloth systems 
but I'm sure it can be used in a bunch of other systems to create procedural extrusion that can be driven really easily. And most of all, because everything is computed using local coordinates and the UV space to fix the curve direction, everything should be pretty stable, even if we distort the mesh locally. Now, of course, it can be combined with subdivision surface, and you can even add more resolution to the computing of the hem itself, if you also resample your curves. I really hope you liked this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you are into that. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.